Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on Supergirl Season 4. Today we are going to be reviewing the episode, rather the Fallen Angel, so if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new, so you don't miss any DCTV or Supergirl videos later this year. So, later tonight I will have a trailer breakdown for the new extended version of the Elseworlds crossover trailer, so that will be out later tonight. Probably alongside that, probably in the same video, will be my Supergirl trailer breakdown for next episode as well. Due to the fact that, obviously, there's three videos to make. Maybe I'll end up doing three videos, but it is probably easier to condense it into one. So, this episode of Supergirl was a very solid episode of Supergirl. Maybe one of my lesser favourites of the season. The first half of the episode felt a bit slow in its pace, and... That's not saying that having a slow pace is bad, I just didn't think a lot of it actually kind of hit like a lot of the back half actually worked very very well for me. So I think it started slow, got better as it got along. So that's my overall verdict of how I felt. So it's a 4 out of 5 episode, again I think very solid really good performances actually in this episode which we'll talk about right now so the main part of the episode is james infiltrating the children of liberty alongside with manchester black at what he wants to do and there's some later reveals in the episode and also supergirl is helping manchester black to sort out whatever problem they had and they were searching for something called a fishing rod some sort of power device that can create a nuke and they wanted to essentially kill Supergirl later in the episode. So Supergirl survives just by a whisker, and Agent Liberty is revealed in the episode to be someone else, which is just a mismatch, and there's some massive reveals with how Manchester Black is actually bad. Obviously, we as the audience knew that he killed people, that he had killed people before, but now it's obvious that he is kind of off the rails a little bit, and his fight scene towards the end of the episode was rather riveting it really worked and it showed how much of a badass he actually is and i think this episode really helped shine a light on manchester black and i love that end scene with jean and how he goes to kara and he's extremely emotional because manchester reveals you know what he's done and the fact that john put that much effort and that much trust into manchester you know conveying him as this sort of hero that he isn't and just an amazing performance right there by David Harewood, even though he was in the episode very minimally, like when he appeared, man, that guy takes the screen. And so the other parts of the episode was Lena's trials and most of the time was spent with her actually talking to the subject, sort of humanizing the subject rather than just some sort of test rat. And I think Katie McGrath puts on an amazing performance in this very subtle yet kind of nuanced version of Lena. I felt like she was given a very good sort of surface to deal with in this episode and she, I think she really performed beyond you know what I would expect from Lena because as you know I'm not a massive fan of Lena but the last few episodes she's been ace so obviously there was like sort of the when they were talking there was the revelation that she always knew that she was part of the Luthers really inside of her once she was adopted she tells the tale of how her mother died and she didn't do anything so she's essentially talking about how cold she thinks she is obviously we can interpret it as the audience as she has this duality to her and she has the good and the bad and obviously her patient dies at the end of the episode but it's for the greater good and that's why as the audience we have to tackle with was it worth it is it going to benefit you know what's the sort of barrier between good and bad and i think they did a really good job with that and at the end kara i think kara talks about duality and the fact that this is going to be a thing with obviously Manchester Black, how he has those two sides now with Lena, and this trend is going along, and this is going to link in to Red Daughter, and how Kara has these two sides to her, this sort of more evil side of her, and then also her Supergirl side, the all good living angel that was very visually seen in the scene where she breaks out and the explosions behind her and she's floating in the sky like an angel obviously a stereotype but i think visually 
it really worked and it was very symbolic. So I think they did a really good job at writing this episode, like all the twists and different turns in the episode worked, apart from I felt like the twist with James, how he saw Supergirl was a little bit stupid, I was like, ah, I don't know about that. But that's probably like one of my only quarrels, apart from maybe the start of the episode was slow, but it was just not what I was used to, and then as it picked up throughout the episode, I think they did a really good job using these storylines to their benefit. So at the end of the episode, we get to see Manchester Black as he rides towards Ben Lockwood's sort of family-run business, and so that's hinting at the fact that he's found out that Ben Lockwood is, in fact, Agent Liberty, so potentially his identity it might be revealed, and Manchester Black is going with him, and now Manchester Black is obviously on a revenge mission to actually avenge Fiona, but also at the same time, he is seen as a villain from Supergirl and their perspective because he's been killing people, they don't agree with that. Obviously, we see him as a villain, but we also see his vulnerability. So it's up to you whether you want to empathize with him or whether you don't due to his loss or not. And so essentially going on forward from this episode, he's going to be seen more as a villain type and he's probably going to be in some fights with Supergo. and I really did like his armour in the episode if you actually noticed that, that was a new addition that I thought really worked and also there were some nice little additions that we actually had in the episode like the power dampeners. I thought that was a nice little sort of new trick rather than just using kryptonite and the fact that there was that island that was you know, a mystery rather, and I think that's to do with immigration or something, like if they can pass through, if they're an alien, that had never been explored before, I thought that island was actually a great concept, and the fact that Supergirl was on like the monitor when you actually go into the island, I thought was rather ironic, because obviously now the Children of Liberty are using it as a base, where it was a base to actually help out aliens before, with Supergirl doing a message, it's kind of ironic and I found that kind of funny but also at the same time you're like that is so smart that they would go to the place that aliens used to actually come in and now they are manning it to explode and kill Supergirl in this episode so I thought that was really effective of how they actually planned that out and so Additionally, in the episode, we didn't really get too much of Brainy or Alex or anyone, which was a shame because I love seeing Alex. Alex was in various scenes, and Brainy was only in a few scenes as well. But the Danvers sister scenes, once again, you know, my favourite things. I love and treasure those moments because the last few seasons was because the last few seasons we really haven't seen that all too much and it's just nice seeing those different elements of Kara and Alex's character. And so essentially what this episode did was try to set up what's to come in the future, the storylines with Lena and how she is essentially doing a metahuman trial and obviously on this earth I don't think they recognise the fact that there's metahumans although there is metahumans that being Silver Banshee and also Livewire who in fact died so it is possible to have metahumans on this earth, but it's seemingly overlooked, like maybe not many people actually know about it on Earth 38, because on Earth 1 it's a normal thing for normal humans to get powers, and in this case they're having to kill people in order to get powers to do these experiments, so I don't think they're as advanced as Earth 1, obviously they have all the different technology, but that's just like a little nitpick about like how they have to sacrifice these people in order to get powers and make them essentially like Supergirl rather than, you know, getting it normally like, say, on The Flash or anything like that. They obviously get it from Dark Matter and maybe they just haven't gone that far to discover Dark Matter on this Earth or anything like that. And that in itself is very dangerous. So either way, you know, there's a lot of dangers that can be done in trying to make someone super as they say. So anyway guys, thank you guys so much for watching and if you did enjoy this video please be sure to leave a like and a comment and also please be sure to share these videos around with your friends, share it on Twitter, share it everywhere that you can, that would mean the world to me. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys later, goodbye. Shut